The Edward D. Inn, the Edward II Inn's proposed conversion to low income, at risk youth housing is a hot issue in the Marina Cow Hollow area. What is your stance on this issue? What plans or proposals do you have to help resolve the need for low income housing in the city? And we will begin with Vilma. You said Vilma. <laughs> I've been following the uh, newspaper um, reports and columns that affects this area in the neighborhood. Uh, we're fortunate enough that um, it's the most quiet and most, um, uh, not too many problems. However, uh, there are some people that would like to change that image in terms of uh, bringing in outsiders to come into the district. I do not disagree for them not to build anything in an area wherein it's direly needed. I believe that uh, to protect our neighborhood, we should be able to conform with the needs of the people. I also believe that uh, in so doing, uh, we would be able to more function better if it was in the right or proper neighborhood. I will not say that it's not in the right neighborhood. However, I think where they're planning to do the, and build this uh, um, project is not in conformity with the city's uh, um, environment. So my take on this is to rethink it one more time and try to, many times, not just once, and try to give the chance for these people to be able to make good use of the project. And uh, this is why I uh, advocate for both children and seniors because the children are the uh, future of our city and the whole uh, image of San Francisco. I thank you once again. Thank you. Just so you know, the order will be straight down the table. So, Mark? Yeah, sure. So, you know, in terms of King Edward II, I think the goals of the Mayor's Office of housing to promote transitional age youth is great. Um, I think in District 2, I am biased, but I think we live in the most beautiful district in the city by far. And I think we have to be very careful as residents not to exhibit what other people you know, would call a NIMBY attitude, that we don't want anything. We might like certain city policies, but we don't want to see them implemented here in the district. We have to be very careful of that. However, ultimately, I do think this is a bad idea and a bad project for our district. And let me tell you why specifically. First of all, financially. It is going to cost, it's estimated, over $9 million for this project, for about 24 units, and that's about $450,000 per unit to build. I think in this day and age, and I don't care whether it's initially city-funded, you know, interest-free loans that are that's coming from our tax dollars, or ultimately state or federal dollars that they want to supplant them with, it's taxpayer money. And I think that money could be much better spent in other areas of district too, no problem, but much better spent to house more people and in areas, the second issue with me, is that you cannot ignore the fact that it is in such close proximity to the Bridge Motel and to the other areas on Lombard Street that have caused problems and have been ridden with crime over the past X number of years. You can't ignore that fact. I think we have to pay attention to that, and I do think it's a bad idea because of that. Those are the two main issues, but let me talk about the process, though, and what we can change. You know, when the Mayor's Office of Housing issues an RFP out to community groups, people bid on this project. About seven people bid on this project. One project was chosen, but in order to submit a bid, you had to be in escrow with the building already. I think the biggest problem that people here in District 2, and specifically in the Marina and Cal Hollow, the biggest issue people had with this is that there was no notice to the community. By the time we found out about it, it had already been a building under contract that had been signed by the city and was going to the mayor for approval. That process has got to change. We can talk about the merits of each individual um, project, even within District 2 for sure, but I think we need to have community input to make this a real process because when they do come in, and I hope they come in in some parts of District 2, 
we want, I want, I would love to see, not only be good for them, but great for the community, have the community embrace it as well. Thank you. Kat? First of all, I want to say that I would like to see that become either senior housing or an elder hostel. I think that would go better with our neighborhood. Now, the Mayor's Office of Housing got desperate because uh, this property was already in escrow, and they've been trying to fit a square peg in a round hole and just completely ignore really important facts. I think the King Edward Project has human and economic uh, implications that I am deeply concerned about. This project went from a NOFA, a notice of funding availability, of $2 million to a $9.1 million project. And if the community housing project is to go forward with this, there will be a 24-room SRO for youth that amounts to, well, Mark said 450000 my figure was 381000 per residential unit for a 250-square-foot room that has no kitchen. Um, that's over $1,000 per square foot in a neighborhood that boasts about $770 per square foot. Um, and right now, CHP is enjoying an interest-free loan of almost $4.5 million from us, San Francisco taxpayers, to purchase this property and engage in pre-development planning. And the developer hopes to refinance in 2012, but if that fails, we carry the loan indefinitely, and that prevents us from spending money on other things like parks and filling our potholes. And besides this boondoggle for the CHP tax credit investors, uh, there's something more important here, and that's the youth. These youth are at risk, and they don't necessarily come from San Francisco. I want to serve people that come from San Francisco, don't you? And also, if we're trying to teach them to be independent and self-sufficient, why, why are we shoehorning them into little tiny rooms that don't have any kitchens? My kids are 13 and 15, and they know how to cook. I think someone who graduates from this program at 24 ought to have a kitchen and know how to cook. That's, and then, because we raise these kind of issues, they tell us that we're NIMBYs, and then they hire a public relations firm to paint us really bad in the press. And I find that offensive. So yes, I agree with Mark. We have to change the process. Thank you. Thank you. Janet? Well, I have heard what the community has said on this issue, and I will stand with the community. I think all of us can agree that the goals of this project are laudable, and it is incumbent upon all of us to take care of and make sure that the most vulnerable youth in our city have an opportunity to thrive. But this current project, as it is, really has some flaws. And besides the financial flaws, I think it's key, in order for the project to be economically feasible, we're going to have to uh, issue a special use district. And what that means is that we'll increase the density. Right now it is zoned for 16 units of group housing. That will have to go up to 24 units of group housing. That's a 50% increase, which is quite an increase, I would say, for the density for that space. Also, if we are going to offer exemptions for open space, outdoor space, for parking, for ADA, and for density, I think that that really does set a bad precedent along Lombard Street. Because what could happen to that hotel next door? Maybe they also would want to change their hotel and the, to turn it into group housing, which I'm not sure that that's exactly what we want on Lombard Street. Um, secondly, I think also, uh, as Mark has said and as Kat has said, the process was incredibly flawed. In order for a project like this to go forward, all of the stakeholders, community stakeholders, should have been notified about this project. To make it a success, it's the only way, this kind of notification is the only way that it would have been successful. And going forward, there has to be a better process where we can bring people to the table earlier and talk about these issues and maybe come to some kind of an agreement. So as the project is slated now, I can't support the project. Um, we could certainly have other supportive housing projects in District 2, and I would welcome the challenge to find other sites so we too could participate in more supportive housing. Thank you. Barbara? Well, I'm on the uh, 180 degree side of this issue. I think it's a wonderful idea. Moreover, I strangely object to the term at-risk youth. I would like to think that we could uh, possibly be a little kinder and call these people disadvantaged youth. And 
not everyone gets the uh, opportunities uh, in their childhood to grow and thrive. And those of us who were less fortunate deserve to have something better happen to us in our transition to adulthood. The project as it stands, they have taken numerous precautions to respond to anticipated objections to the negative fantasies that the community might have regarding these people. They have crisis intervention counselors available on a 24-7 basis. They have extra people available during the day. The people who are going to be staying here have no violent criminal past. To suspect them of engaging in, in, in something that they haven't yet done or to convict them of something they haven't done is terribly unfair and goes against just, just basically everything I believe in, quite frankly. And I am ashamed that this community would even consider rejecting this idea. I think the challenge is not, are they good enough for us, but are we good enough for them? Are we going to be the role models that we need to be for them to take a look at us and say, yes, I want to be like them, and to give these people the leadership that they need to grow and to thrive? Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. This was for me at first a very troubling uh, issue uh, because I had spent so much of my life teaching, caring for, and dealing with foster kids, transitional youth, all kinds of, of kids. I had been in a big brother and a big, a big brother, big sister program. I've been working uh, in schools for, for 20 years. And I said, oh, let's see if there's a way for this to come in here. Um, I don't think it's a bad place. I don't think uh, the District 2 is a bad place to try and uh, make something work, uh, a program like this. Um, I think the notice problems and the process issues are more complex uh, than I think we're willing to agree. Um, I, I was at the last Marina Merchants Association meeting where uh, we all sat down and started thinking about what sorts of things we would like to put into the empty storefronts. And maybe if we all sort of agree ahead of time, we can put something in there and there would be less opposition to it. Um, I don't think that works for this kind of a program. I don't think that works in District 2 anywhere uh, like that. So I think we have to give some thought to that. Ultimately, however, the cost is too high. It's just way too high for what we get out of it. Um, we've done things like this in San Francisco. I know that the Truancy Center that we're spending $500 million on serviced 18 kids last year, and we just can't do that anymore. And ultimately, uh, also, um, the program that is being uh, explained to you is not exactly uh, what, we, what you think it is. Um, I have paid very close attention to this one, and uh, what they're offering is permanent housing. And if you think that it's transitional youth that they're going to house right now, it's not going to be that in another 20 years. Uh, it's permanent housing. There's no provision uh, for uh, dealing with these uh, kids once they get a certain age. And it, there's only a certain number of rooms, and you can figure a number of them are not going to leave each year. After a few years, that thing is going to be not for transitional youth at all. Um, so uh, it's just not the right program. Thank you, Abraham. Okay, the next.